Hey, how you guys doing? It's Sean K from Heli Direct. I'm um, at my local hobby store, as you can see. Um, I was walking in and realized that I hadn't shared a conversation that I had with Nick Maxwell back at Urcha in August. Uh, so here, check it out. Hope you like it. Good evening, good morning, wherever you are. Um, good night, uh, salutations, greetings. I have one of the best uh, pretty much arguably the best. Uh, he's won all kind of championships all over the globe, different solar systems. He speaks 19 different languages. No, no he doesn't. I just made that up. But we have uh, awesome Nick Maxwell here at Haley Direct. Hey, Ray. Yes. So he's busy, as, as you know, there's like a different uh, uh, auto contest. There's, he's flying everything, all just, he's all over the place. Um, so I was able to pull him for a couple seconds so we can pull him aside, ask him a couple questions, see what he's working on. He has a new company that he, uh, uh, Nick Maxwell Products. Um, his his uh, tent is right next to Futaba, which he flies as well. Um, so I just want to ask him a couple questions and, uh, you know, so how are you, Nick? Good. I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So I saw you released uh, Nick's, Nick Maxwell Products. Uh, how old is the company? Uh, well, it actually started in 2013. Really? Um, and I had come out with a line of rotor blades back then. Okay. Um, and then I had stopped when I went full time with Futaba. Okay. And then now I'm starting back up again with another new line of rotor blades okay. and also kind of a little bit of a hobby store ish kind of thing with products that just I, that I fly. Gotcha. And so, yeah, like oh. the specific stuff you'll find on my model, I can resell it a bit. Now, when you say my model, what is that exactly? Um, if somebody says, hey, your helicopter looks cool, I want to re reproduce that setup. Right. Um, I can help people get that set up and go in and. And like if you buy a Futaba radio from me, I will put my radio program on it for you. So it's get kind of out a, of here. Yeah, it's just something simple that it, it kind of helps. If you get it, you can be more successful with that helicopter. Got you. Okay, now when nice. you say my program from my radio to yours, uh, you're not giving them all your secrets though, right? Yeah, that, it's exactly what I'm flying that day. Get out of here. Yeah, so the no secrets, secrets in your thumbs. There's no secrets. <laughs> okay. I thought you had your own special Nick Max, Nick Maxwell. No. Okay. No, and I do warn people. You know, maybe my style of what I want is different than what you want, but at least your base setup's there, and you can tune your rage and you, you know whatever. You right, want. right, right, right. Okay. So we had a question, Brian. You had a question uh, about F uh, F three C setup or something. You said. Yeah. So so. We do know you as the king of F3C, precision flying. Right. Um, I have myself been interested in precision flying as well. I asked you a couple of questions the other day. So yeah. how does one get started? What is what is some of the, the, the elementary things folks need to know before they really start precision flying? Basically, just get out there and start doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody started at that same spot. Yeah. And so when you see, it's a little intimidating because you got there and you see all these lines yeah. and these flags and you're like 20 feet off. And no, nope, everybody does that. So <laughs> okay. just just keep doing it. And it's everybody can do the maneuver. So yeah. you just go out there and, and do it. And just, I think that the hard part um, is kind of putting yourself in that perspective okay. of, oh, okay, I'm not going to go out there and do 24 different flips, right. but I'm going to try to do this as accurately as I can. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. But that can be just as fun as the other stuff. So. Awesome. Gotcha. Very cool. It doesn't require anything special. Go out there with your helicopter and do it yeah. tomorrow. Okay. Awesome. So how many championships have you won in your lifetime? Um, See, when you have to go mm, and think about it, that means you're an official <laughs> pro, the best on the planet. Yeah. They were all a while ago. Okay. <laughs> Um, the 3D Masters, the XFC a few times, the Battle of the Brands and stuff like that. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so the Battle of the Brands, um, for people that, we're at Urcha right now, Urcha 2021 right now, um, in case you don't know out there. Uh, when you have the Battle of the Brands, what exactly is this? For me? Yes. This is just fun. Gotcha. I love it. So I try to choose music that I think is kind of fun, energetic. Um, you're not out there trying to make shapes. You're not out there trying to do anything like that. Yeah. If you bob a little bit, who gives a crap? If right. it's low, it's fun. It's cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> awesome. so, quick, so quick question. When you're, when you're getting ready for something, let's just say, uh, uh, competitions in Dubai in a year and you have these list of maneuvers, yeah. is there a go-to process that you do? Like, is there, like I only wear these socks when I fly or is it like you have these isms that you get ready for? Um, yeah, kind of. Um, so I guess helicopter setup wise, first when I'm out of practice, I set the helicopter up mm. because when you're out of practice, you know, then you're going to see all these little wiggles and stuff. Right. Um, so I do that, and then about a month before the contest, you, your nerves really start kicking in. Okay. Um, 
so I'm bad. I eat out a lot. Wait, so, so, I try so you to, get nervous? Yes, very. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So I do try to start to eat a little better before the contest. Mm -hmm. um, I'm real bad about monsters, so I try to cut those down to like oh, one man. or two a day okay. instead of like six. <laughs> right. Um, and then just make sure everything's ready. And then at the contest, uh, my buddy Jason that works for Heli Direct, he'll tell you, mm -hmm. uh, I only usually drink Sunkist and eat a bunch of Jolly Ranchers. Really? And it's just, I I get real <laughs> nervous and I get acid reflux. And so having like a hard candy and the sun-kissed something in the, <laughs> when it's got enough carbonation in it, that it, it, it helps. Right. Oh, that's <laughs> cool. So if you want to be on his level, you got to do Jolly Ranchers and sun -kissed. That's the secret sauce. <laughs> I don't know what started that. I think it's just. Right. Yeah. So it's been going on for years. Yeah, about 15. All right. So what age were you when you actually picked up first a transmitter and said, hey, I'm going to fly this? What age were you? Uh, airplanes, I was four four years old yes my father flew um so uh he got me into the airplanes and that kind of stuff and then when i was eight or nine um, i got into the helicopters wow so 1998 okay so when you picked up helicopters were you like i love this immediately or were you kind of like yeah let me see or yeah i really liked it okay um, so my father flies pylon racing airplanes oh okay and the u.s nationals for pylon was the same time as the helicopters so We'd be there for the pilot, and I'd see the helicopter guys, uh, and I'd really like to watch them. Sure. So when sure. I finally got a helicopter, but I was terrible. That, that was one thing. Like you know, some people are very natural at, at yeah. what they do. I'm not natural at all. Gotcha. I have to practice a lot. So it took two or three years of just hovering around. Oh my God! So so take if you're starting, um, understand what he says because I was having a conversation with Brian last yeah. night. We're talking about people who just kind of explode on the scene. It's never just an explode on the scene. It's a lot of practice. It's a lot of discipline. It's a lot of learning. It's a lot of mess ups. It's a lot of crashes. It's a lot, whole lot of that stuff. So be patient with yourself. Take your time. Like he said, just get out there and do it. If you're starting with a blade, uh, 230 or whatever size, it just start. Just get out there, get something, and start. Pretty much? Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you fly with your buddy too, there might be one thing that he picks up instantly and you don't. Just wait a few months. There'll be something that you pick up that they don't. <laughs> ah, I love it. I love it. Friendly competition. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. So Nick Nick Maxwell Products, um, how many pieces of products do you have in your lineup right now? Um, for products that I've designed and manufactured, not too many. Um, I've got some Diablo upgrades. Okay. And then uh, for me, um, it's good to have products that I don't see out on the market or products that I can't find that already don't do what I want them to do. Gotcha. Um, so one of those was blades. Okay. Um, so I've always really been particular about blades, so I came up with my own blade design. Okay. Um, what is the name of this blade? Uh, Revo. Revo blades, uh, and they are 145, yep. I believe? Yep, 145 a set, and they're all made in the U.S. Um, actually, Lovely. even the carbon and the materials are sourced in the U.S. Get out of uh, here. Yep. Very cool. So. Okay, and one fun fact, I just want to add this in here. Um, in case you've been in the hobby for a while, uh, there was this guy uh, that had a a blade called the blades back in the day Vic campbell uh he is the i don't know what, what would you call him he's a one of the godfathers right blades, really right um, so yeah you worked with him on this yeah, design i flew his blades for years okay um and Vic and i just became close friends and when i got a little older uh, he i think wanted to kind of maybe not do the do the business and the manufacturing stuff you know that's his thing he's done it been there done it right. i kind of wanted to um, so we just talked, and I, I use a lot of his processes and ideas, and uh, he is very much an instrumental part in the road. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Shouts out to Vic Campbell. Um, I met him a, a few times at uh, uh, Birmingham Flying mm -hmm. Fly. Yep. Uh, cool guy. The blades are amazing. Um, so the, I love the matte and gloss you have, yeah. the contrast. Uh -huh. Very cool. Um, and I heard you explain about the root of the blade. The first, what, maybe eight inches is like complete, almost solid carbon or something? Yeah, it's very, it's really dense and there's a lot of layers of different materials in there. Okay. Um, that first section of the blade doesn't do anything flying wise. So on any blade, it just doesn't? No, it just doesn't. So most of the time, the reason that you see the blade all the way to this is for rigidity. Ah, uh, okay. So, to, it, which makes sense. You, yeah. You'd want to keep it constant like that for rigidity. Um, but I talked with Vic and we thought, make it so you could eliminate that mm. the helicopter flies on about the last third of the blade really yes yeah, so you're actually flying out of the tip ah uh, so okay well, cool we, well we know that now i didn't know yeah. that before i thought it was the whole blade but it's mm -hmm. just not true yeah 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 so you could take the exact same blade and cut that whole center section out you wouldn't know 
<laughs> oh man. <laughs> Don't try that at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you do, if you just cut it out on a normal blade, it'd be too weak. It'd right, right. Yeah. So your actual uh, design is is a bit of a secret because you've worked and changed some things and stuff like that. Yeah. Are you going to be doing different sizes? Or are you going to be pretty much sticking with them? I would like to do different sizes. Okay. Um, to be quite honest with you, the reason I haven't is because I don't tend to fly a lot of helicopter sizes. Mm. Yeah. So for me to go out there and judge products uh-huh. that, oh well. Why don't I? So, for example, I also sell spin blades. Mm. Um, to me, they fly really good. Mm-hmm. So, why make a 600 when spin already does the fly? Gotcha. Spin? Okay. Um, yeah. But I would like to try. I'd like to learn more about the different sizes and see maybe where there's a gap that maybe I could fill. Gotcha. So, any feedback on that would be great. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. So, yeah, that's what he's working on. Um, so, where do you see yourself in about 10 years? So like, like if, if you if you get Rub the genie bottle. A genie comes out and says, "Hey, in ten years, I want to be here. I want my stuff to look like this." Like, tell me where Nick is in ten years with his business right now. Business wise, I I hope that it's actually my full time job. Okay. Um, I think that would be amazing. Uh, I did that for several years, and uh, as you get older, you need health care and you need stuff like that. So, um, but. I would love it to be something. I absolutely love to fly helicopters. I cannot get it's very it takes me a lot to get burnt out. Mm. Um, so going to these events and doing that kind of stuff this would be awesome. Um, I would love to see some other products come out, like maybe some more nitro stuff. Mm-hmm. I love nitro engines, so yeah, gotcha. maybe something like that. And like something cool for just the whole hobby industry, like wireless servos or something, right? I, I hate wiring stuff. What if we had some wireless oh, wow. servos? I just got shields. I'm like, yeah. literally. Yeah. No, because I, I ride bikes, right? So uh, me and Kyle, are we, we cycle, not together, but we talk about bikes all the time. And we have these wireless uh, where we can change the gears, the derailers oh, and stuff. So yeah. it's wireless. The only thing that we haven't gotten the technology for is wireless brakes. So if you go wireless brakes and, and with your components, literally you can see nothing, no lines on the bike. It's just all internal stuff. And like, you know, but now I'm thinking about it. That would be like next. Yeah, wouldn't that be cool? That's Absolutely. the next level. <laughs> Absolutely. You heard it here first. He's probably going to come out with it first. So even <laughs> yeah. if you're designing it, come yeah. talk to him first. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's probably the next thing, right? Is how, how our helicopters become more easy to work on. Um, my honest opinion is the reason why helicopters were so huge was because every week there was something new to try. Mm. And then the the FTV racing every week, yeah. every day, every hour with them, right? You know, something new to try. And I think now helicopter stuff is starting to get back there now where people are coming out with more stuff. And, nice. Because yeah. that's the fun part, right? I yeah, mean, absolutely. You, you go out there and you can only just put bore holes in the skies for, for so much. It's fun to try stuff. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. Um, so I'm going to ask you, this is just for me personally. Uh, okay. And then to, but, you know, it's just I'm having a tough time doing Piro TikToks, okay? I just get I, I, I'm, tr- I'm I'm trying to break it up in pieces, and I know you have. If you go, uh, what what is your YouTube channel? You got a bunch of a series of videos. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just named Maxwell, but um, the one tank tips. One tank tips. Yeah. That's what it is. So the Piro TikTok, I, and I keep. I know it's timing. I know it's like the Piro flip, and I I know, but I just need something. I need to leave here smarter about this maneuver. If I'm starting here, I can do a four point TikTok, but where I'm having trouble is. It's catching it at the right time on the backside. Do you have any advice on, okay, think of it this way and not this way? Uh, yeah, so I recently had to relearn pirouetting TikToks because I like right rudder, but I needed to learn left rudder. I'm left rudder. Yeah, okay, so um, my biggest problem was the collective. So getting the collective timing right. Yes. Um, so what I did is I just did a lot of pirou flips mm-hmm. and screwed up the collective to see what it would do. And then you can turn your mess up into a pirouetting TikTok because usually you'll hit it right. Right. You're like, oh, that just flipped yeah, that back looked the other right. Way. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sh- <laughs> mind blown, mind blown. <laughs> Do pir- pirouetting flips. Just start messing with the collective, and you'll see one in there. And then once you get that, you can kind of yeah. reduplicate it mm-hmm. and then find your own way. I'm gonna try that today. So if I need to order parts of new Rebo blades, you know why? Because maybe yeah. a crash. Yeah. Let's go up three mistakes high. Right. <laughs> three mistakes high. You heard it from here first. Yeah. Brian, uh, Brian, you have any more questions? Nope. I'm good to go. Well, Nick, we appreciate you so very much, man. Uh, you're busy down there. I know you uh, You have your pops here in town with you. Yep. Um, he's man in the tent right now. <laughs> yeah. And, and I know people, I've seen him. I've waited like six hours to ask him a question because <laughs> there's a line of people buying the blades. It's, it's craziness at his tent, man. So if you're at Urcha right now, um, I don't know if you'll see this at Urcha, but if you're at Urcha, go visit his tent. 
Nick's Max, Nick Maxwell Products, Futaba. Yeah. Check them out. Cool. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. All Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Kelly, you're right.